over the United States. Students are getting in on the act, competing with home-built robots at local, regional, and national robotics contests. In the first robotics competition, students are given a standard kit of parts and a set of rules from which they must design and build their own robots. Younger students can compete in Lego robot challenges using Lego blocks, sensors, motors, and gears to construct and program a robot to perform various tasks on a playing field. At my high school, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, the freshman class participates in an annual robotics competition. Let's take a look. These freshmen at Thomas Jefferson High School have been working hard for weeks, designing, constructing, soldering, testing, and programming robots. Technology teacher John Lefevre explains a little bit about the process. They've been building robots for uh, almost uh, a semester now, but uh, what, what they've been able to do is to take from scratch uh, their concepts of what electronics do and be able to apply that build a microcontroller board, be able to program that microcontroller board, design a chassis to, uh, for the robot and build that robot and then be able to compete with it. So how did they actually build those robots? Allison explains how she built her robot named Gary the Snail. We started out with basic materials. We got a square foot of PVC plastic, which is this white here and we were given two servos and these are actually powered. We were given CDs to use as wheels. Some people ended up using um, larger CDs and it made their robots go faster. And we ended up putting it all together and there were a few things I had to fix. I had to buy hinges for the inside, but ended up turning out pretty well and it got first for appearance in my class. Robot building in tech class is one way for students to develop practical problem solving skills. If there is a problem, you want to be able to know how to either solve it or work around it. And that's what we're doing with the robots. Tech is also a way of us to take our ideas and put them into real life. And that was the biggest thing with the robots. We knew what we wanted it to look like on paper. And we knew what the code was supposed to do. And when we put it on the maze, everything changed. There was one motor ran faster than the other. It would always tilt to the right. The sides would catch on the walls. And we basically did have to take that and put it into real concepts. What's hard about it is that each servo individually like has its own like quirks and its own personality kind of. So they can be kind of annoying sometimes just like anyone else and uh, they just choose what they want to do and sometimes they don't do what you told them to do or what you programmed them to do, they do whatever they want, you know. So sometimes they run into problems like that. So how exactly does the robotics competition work? Catherine explains what would be in store for the seven finalists. They haven't seen the maze they're going to go through. They're going to have to program on the spot. You know, 400 people watching, they'll be programming on laptop computers for 10 or 15 minutes. And that's the idea of the adaptation of it. Being able to look at a problem and come up with a solution right then. Writing code in 10 minutes is a challenge for even the most advanced programmers. The winner of the competition gave me the secret to his success. It's always important to get a good idea of what you're going to do beforehand and then build off of that to meet upcoming challenges. For example, my robot first had sensors, but there wasn't enough time to build them in, so I had to build some other things to adjust for not having them. So pretty much get a good plan from the start, but don't be afraid to change that plan as time goes on. These talented freshmen contradict the cynics who are concerned about American students not being prepared to compete in the global economy. It kind of crystallizes what we've been doing in class the whole year and it really makes it um, very interesting. It's a kind of a really interesting way to uh, use what we've learned uh, in like, real life. The first thing we all thought of is, wow, I can't believe that our final product will actually be a moving robot. I mean, I don't think any of us have really ever done anything um, quite like this before, and it was really exciting, actually. Really nerve-wracking, because we didn't know how it would turn out, but it was great, and we all loved it. 